one years you lead a normal life. Then one evening you develop a headache. You go to bed only to wake up the following day and realize you cannot see anymore. That changes your life forever. That is the story of Henry Wanyoike, triple world record holder. My name is Duncan Haimba. He is a triple world record holder in 5,000 meters, 10,000 meters in marathon. No other Kenyan athlete has competed so widely and so successfully as Henry Wanyoike, who is now 44 years old. It is documented that his time of 2 hours, 31 minutes and 31 seconds in 2005 at the Hamburg Marathon still stands as the world record for blind runners, 13 years now and counting. His is a tale of resilience for a man who led a normal life only to suffer a mild stroke which affected his optic nerves at the age of 21 years. I had a stroke, mouth stroke, which affected my optic nerves. So it was, it was in the month of April when I had that stroke. And after going to some hospitals, I was given the medication and I was able to recover from the stroke. It was just a mild stroke. Then uh, on 30th April 1995, I went to bed with my good sight. But from 1st May 1995, I could not be able to see again. So the night started to be very long. So uh, at that morning, I could not believe that uh, I could not be able to see again. So it is something which, ha which happened overnight, one night. And since then, now this is my 23rd year since I lost my sight. Before losing his sight, Henry Wanyoike says he became paralyzed on one side but that he had recovered from that particular stroke. It was then a shock when he woke up a blind man. At first he thought it was still dark in the night and could not understand why his mother was waking him up. When my mom insisted I had to wake up, you know, because uh, at that, that particular time I, I thought it, is, it was still like a joke. So because I know how to figure out my, the room, I just came out, came out very well, and then I, uh, my mom was standing outside, and then I was telling her I cannot be able to see her. Then it's like she was asking me, why are you telling me that you cannot be able to see? And to me, I was telling her I can't see anything. So she wanted, even to, because she was uh, leaving, she wanted to give me some money, and uh, then I, I told her, this is, the, I, the, I don't know, this is not the money, it's papers. So I didn't knew, in fact, like, I was confused. And then my mom, was, she, was, she asked me, are you serious, you cannot be able to see? So she had like to give me some tea, and then she could uh, try, to, to try to see whether I'm, I'm joking, until the time she realized, oh, I, it might be true. So she had to tell me to prepare myself, and then she took me immediately to the to the hospital, but now she had even to hold my hand to walk out outside the gate all the way to the hospital, Kikui Hospital. His mother Gladys Kegadi is now a retired teacher. She says it was a morning she remembers painfully. So wakati nirimuwa musha na nikampatia pesa, akuja na mafuta ya ta. Wakati nirimuwa musha, akaniambia haoni pesa. Mi nika kasirika, nikaenda kwa room, nika mulisa na hii ni hini kwa kwa stool, haka niambia ni makaratasi. Nika mulisa hati nini, unataka kuniambia hati huwoni hati hini makaratasi, nika muambia si hini pesa. To me, I thought it is, it, 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 in my mind there was nothing like I have lost my sight. Until the time I went to the hospital, to Kikui hospital, the, there was a, the doctor told me, can you tell me how many fingers? Then I was telling him, I can't see anything. So that is the time I came to, oh, I, I think I have lost my sight. Because he was, whatever the doctor was telling me to tell what I can be able to see, how many fingers, one or two, three fingers, and even at a distance, then he came very close, then I told him, I can't see anything. So I was put in medication and then, uh, it couldn't work. It was all in vain. Then I had even my mom had to 
take me to Kenyatta National Hospital to Mpisha. She really tried, did her effort, her best, and then there was nothing, it was all in vain. A bit and sad reality had sunk. Accepting the new status was a problem for him. He was taken to Kikuyu Hospital for rehabilitation and therapy to help him accept his new world. It was so painful, so stressing. I was in, a, in depression because I could not believe it has happened to And then you know that was the time I was very young after school. I could not believe it has happened to me. So most of the time I was wondering what will add up. Uh, uh, now I have lost my sight. Wakati hata nilikuwa nikimpasuedi aende huko rehab alikuwa akikata na wale nurses wa huko dogoto alikuwa akimwambia aende huko na anasema atasunga ngombe akaambia hapana uko na maisha ingine mbele yako mpaka wakati mwingine alikuwa trouble some huyu kijana Wanyoike would later be taken to the Machakos Technical Institute for the Blind as he slowly accepted his new status. It took me three years for me to accept that I have to live in that condition and uh, then uh, I have to be now to now to, to accept myself that I didn't have any choice. So rather than to accept myself, hundred percent and was able now to work very well with uh, closely with the other 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 students I met in Machakos who were also so kind to me and uh, with the teachers, they were also so kind to me and they really supported me in, in uh, uh, for me to be, to be who I am today. It is at this Machakos Institute that he began his journey into the world of athletics, a dream he had harbored all along but didn't know he would do it visually impaired. During the time I was in Machakos, most of the time, early in the morning, the principal of the school used to come for me. Go, uh, we were always running with him, Mr. Saya, and also with the Mr. Muni, who was the games teacher. He was also visually impaired, but Mr. Saya, was, uh, he didn't have any problem with his sight. So he was my guide by that time. So every morning he had to come for me, go for run. And I remember the, when we were marking the Olympic dinner in 1999 in Machakos town, uh, he took me to, to the run. It was three, three kilometer road race for the people with the disability and then 10 kilometers for the others. I did it so well. I won the race. I got a t-shirt and a certificate. This really motivated me very, very much. And then one year later, we still had the same, same run. I did it so well. And that time, I was given a guy, a guy from the institution, uh, John Chiaro, who came with me after when we closed the school. There were qualifications for Sydney in August. That time, now it was a, a, a holiday, school holiday. So we came with the, John Chiaro here at home. And then I told my mom, by that time even my mom was not aware that I, I was actively involved in sports. I could not tell her that uh, I'm running anymore because he thought I have already stopped to run. So when I came with the, uh, the John Chiaro, we, uh, we told her what, what, what is, uh, who is he. And then I, we told her that uh, on, in two days we are going to Nairobi, to Nyao National Stadium for qualification for Sydney. She really supported us. He gave us the, the, the fare to travel to Nyao National Stadium. And when we, we got there, we did a good run. We qualified for Sydney. And that is now how we started. Now with the Kiaro, we qualified. We had to look for the passports and to struggle for other things. And uh, everybody was quite happy. I was also very happy to see that uh, from what I was dreaming to be when I had my good sight, now it has happened even when I, with no sight. During the 1999 Olympic day run, Henry was given a guide, John Charlo, to help him sharpen his skills in preparation for the Sydney Paralympics in 2000. It was the fifth year since he lost his sight. With no other hope in life, he knew it was only through athletics that he stood a chance to change his life. 
The year 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia had just ended, where as usual, the Kenyan team had exhibited a spectacular performance. It was the turn of the Paralympics team to shine as well. The pressure was overwhelming, more so for Henry Wanyoike, who was participating in the 5,000 meters race in which Noah Nyen had won Kenya a gold medal in the Olympics. I remember when we, we went to Sydney, uh, everybody has done his part. It was now only me who had remained. Uh, it was the last event. So, the, uh, so they were, so now they started to tell me, Henry, you, keep, you have been telling us that you are going to bring glory to Kenya. So now it's your day. So I had a lot of pressure. And uh, I remember when we went to the, the actual day for the competition, when we were standing in front of everybody in the whole stadium, it was full to the capacity. Uh, during the introduction, they just said, Henry Wanyoike in Vidi from Kenya. So they, they never mentioned anything else from me because that was my first competition. But for the others, so they had a very good history that they have participated in somewhere else. They have won, they have their champions. So to me, I was very new and I was racing against champions. So I had to turn to my guide. I told him, John, now next time we need a better introduction than, uh, uh, more than this. You know, it was a very shallow introduction. So next time we need a very good introduction. And uh, I remember after the start of the race, I had a lot of, uh, I think a herald of energy. Immediately the race began, Wanyoike, with the help of his guide John Chalo, put his best foot forward. With all eyes from Kenya on him, he knew this was a mission he had to conquer. By the seventh lap, I had already overlapped all those champions. So by the time we are going to the 11th lap, I had almost now overlapped the second draft to everybody. So by the time we were finishing, my guide started to, uh, to complain that he, he's exhausted, he could not be able to, to go on. Because uh, by the time we were competing, he was, uh, he was recovering from malaria he had before. So he was not fully recovered. However, there was a dramatic turn of events that nearly threw all his effort in jeopardy. His only registered guide for the race, John Chalo, who was suffering from malaria, was overwhelmed. His body could not push anymore, and Wanyoike was staring at a loss. He started to, to complain, now he has to, to quit from the race. Now I didn't know what to do. Now it is like the, the, the final lap, the, 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 the final lap. So I had like to push to keep telling him, please, Kiaro, we, we can be able to win. We are doing very well. So can you please push your, yourself to the end? But for the 50 meters, it was so hard for him to to continue. So it was like uh, now I had to rely with the people from outside the stadium to help me, still carry pushing my guide Kiaro uh, to the end. And uh, so they were telling me. Henry, keep left, Kenya, straight on. So the 50 meters, it was a lot of struggle to the end. We still we won the race. This is the 25-second video on YouTube that shows a visually impaired Wanyoike struggling to reach the finishing line with his guide completely drained. In his mother's house hangs this now famous picture at the finish line, a situation that cost him. He finished three seconds under the previous record. The last 50 meters, I had to hold the heart of my guide. So because you are not supposed to, fin uh, to run on your own, so I had to, be to finish with him. So the 50 meters, I had to push him. And it's like he was like bedding to the ground, and I, had, I was telling, please, Kiaro, don't stop, don't embarrass me. We are winning. Please keep strong for these 50 meters. So he had now to, like I was now pulling him 
to the I, and I had to listen to the to the people who are outside the stadium because I could not. You know, I I was very new in that uh, sport. You are supposed to. You can have two guides, but that time because I was very, I didn't knew that you can have two guides. So the the team, the the coach tried to get me another guide, but now since I didn't register, he could not be able to join me for that 50 minutes. But now they had to push me when they were outside the the the, the range. They were telling me, they were giving me direction all the way to the finishing. So Kero, when he saw the finishing line, he just stopped and cooled down. Then I had to cross the finishing line. We won the race. That was not all. There was yet another challenge. His win was contested. The whole world protested that I was given the wrong classification. So they thought, I was not given the right, because before any race you have to go for test. So I had to go for more tests because I thought I could, I can be able to see, because I could not believe somebody, a very strange person coming and winning very easily. So my medal was delayed for three days. I had to go for various tests. And then my guide had to be taken to the hospital. And for after three days after they were satisfied with the test, I was given the medal. In fact, I got my medal on a wheelchair because I could not be able to start because I had a very bad, severe headache. Again, because of those tests in my head. But later I got my medal. And that is how we, brought, we got a, a, a good medal for the team and for the whole country. And it was the only good medal we brought in the, whole, in the continent of Africa. And since then, that medal has been all the time. It's for Kenya since then, up to date. Perhaps his major undoing was the fact that he was a guinea pig in the Paralympics for Team Kenya. They used to take the partially bridled people, so not totally bridled. So by that time, I was the only totally bridled athlete in that, at that time. And that was why my training was quite challenging to everybody. Even the coach has never trained somebody who is totally bridled, but he was training people who are low vision. And for me, it was now totally bright. But now I thank the government because they took the challenge. They say they let them take the they tell them take Henry to see whether he is going to make it. And then it was the first time for somebody with the visual totally who is totally bright going to such big international competition assignment. And I was able to make it very well. In, in fact, I remember even the, that uh, by that time, uh, former President Moy, he just even called me after the winning, uh, that victory in Sydney. He called me to congratulate me because nobody could believe it. 